32 months later, she presented again to the clinic complaining of night sweats and some cervical adenopathy. She uh, had a CT scan, which again showed bilateral cervical nodes, which were enlarged. She had bilateral axillary nodes along with a hyaline node, which was approximately 3.1 centimeters in diameter. She had a biopsy of one of the cervical nodes, and it again showed a grade 3A follicular lymphoma, very similar to her initial biopsy. She was referred to an academic medical center where she was enrolled in a clinical trial with lenalidomide and rituximab. She received 12 cycles or 12 months of the combination and she achieved uh, her best response, which was a partial response uh, in the trial. This patient had a relapse approximately 32 months after receiving bendamustine rituximab followed by rituximab maintenance for 12 months. This would not be outside of the norm. Uh, the median remission times in studies with bendamustine and rituximab are on the order of somewhere between three to five to seven years. Uh, now this patient was a little bit on the short end, 32 months, but again, I wouldn't say that um, in a patient who had a diagnosis of follicular lymphoma, 32 months following induction would be outside of the norm. Why this is relevant, if you see a patient that has a very rapid relapse, the first thing you would want to do is rule out any potential transformation. Now, when a patient presents uh, with relapse, again, beyond a year to two years after induction therapy, there are several options. In this patient, uh, it's been well over a year since she received rituximab, so one of the options would be to expose her to rituximab as a single agent. Uh, there are other drugs uh, which uh, also are very effective. In some settings, she could have received rituximab with CVP or, rituxi or potentially rituximab with CHOP chemotherapy as uh, salvage management of this uh, follicular lymphoma.